Oh, right. I have to play. Oh, no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, yes. do I do something now? <laughs> oh, all right. Each Sunday night, I'd watch the practice with none of my friends. I'd turn the dial to ABC to see the creep of the week that Bobby Donald defends. But I'm out of practice. With your host. Keith Varney! Oh, hey, we did it! <laughs> and Mike and Deglio. Way back in high school, most every night, my mom watched QVC, so I missed the practice. There was no TiVo, what could I do? Wait 15 years, get fat, then stream it. This is episode 152. We still don't know what we're doing. What can you say? I mean, that's <laughs> it. You nailed it. Yeah. And welcome to the Out of Practice podcast, a weekly podcast in which me, Keith Murney, Discuss David E. Kelly's award-winning series, The Practice, with my buddy, Mike Indaglio. That's him. Uh, Mike, we missed it. We we did not commemorate Out of Practice's 150th episode. This mm. is actually 152 uh, and the 142nd episode of The Practice. Some would say we should celebrate. Some would say we should commemorate. Others would say we should apologize. So... And uh, for all of it, I think we should finally take the advice of the episode title that we have never taken once in our life. We are, of course, talking about The Practice Season 7, Episode 19, Less is More, uh, which is, uh, we've definitely subscribed to the more is more. But only, is it less is more this time, or is it les? Like, what? Uh, what's the, the lack of S? I, I had to, I checked it on the IMDb. That is accurate. No, no, it is. And it is, it is absolutely correct. And you're going to understand once we start watching this episode, for better or mm -hmm. worse, it's going to make sense. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, how's it going, right. Mike? You know, it's going all right. Uh, Jen has overcome her, her omicron situation it's her third covid or second COVID? yes her third covid we we Oof. think uh my mom is now covid positive my brother's wife is covid positive we have a lot of covid happening my sister's son so we did a drive-by birthday for him this past weekend oh uh, and is what everybody was really cool, doing okay everybody's doing okay okay i should have led with that i thought uh, what was really kind of cool this weekend was so my my nephew he is six five or six and he is like all he's all about the police right he wants to be a cop he's got all the police toys he's like that's his phase right now fair enough how old is he he's five or six he's, nice. he's a young kid and uh so my brother-in-law invited called up the police department and said as much to the police department of chester county pennsylvania and at uh, 2 o'clock on Saturday, they brought three cop cars with sirens and lights flaring <laughs> up to the house. Oh, cool. They let us, like, get in the car, and they gave them, a, like, a swag bag, and it was it was so cool. It was really, oh, you that's know. super cute. There's plenty of reason to uh, be critical of some of our men in blue, but there are also cool dudes doing cool stuff and doing the job and doing it proud. So I wanted yeah, to give that a shout sure. out. And nice. uh, that's, what, that's what's been up. What about you, buddy? Well, I tell you, we've had quite the week here uh, because our furnace died. Ooh. And if you're paying attention uh, to the dates that we're dropping these, we're in Jan January, excuse me. And uh, it's cold. We, it's, it's cold. In fact, we had the, I think the coldest night in years here in New Jersey was down in the single digits with uh, no heat in our house. So that wasn't great. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it sort of, sputtered out and we were trying to limp it along a little bit here and here uh but this morning our friends at infinite comfort here in new jersey the hvac uh specialists came and fixed it and uh they were excellent so folks is your furnace down do you live in northern new jersey 
Infinite Comfort. Uh, they actually, they did it good. You know, they didn't uh, try to oversell us on any nonsense. They communicated well. They wore their masks the whole time, which is not the truth, not the case with the first company we tried with. Oh. Uh, we, we called him the super spreader. Uh, but uh, very professional, got the job done. And thanks to our friends at a American Home Warranty, uh, we actually didn't have to pay for most of it because we have a, we actually like pay for a, a home warranty, which I didn't even know existed, but, uh, it covers shit that breaks. And so it's like so, a landlord. It's so it's like a landlord. And, uh, so that was really, uh, so right. that was nice. So cool. it, it was a, uh, it was a cold and stressful weekend, but now everything works again. It's, uh, now it's pretty Keith, cool. Keith's heart and physical being has warmed up ready to, uh, to watch what I can only imagine will be uh, the beginning of the end of Bobby Donnell today. Ah, yes. Well, one of us, one of the, one of those two has warmed up. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. So, so we've, uh, we're in an interesting point in the practice history mm -hmm. because we are, we are running up on the end of season seven. It, now, and it's been weighing on me, Keith. It's been weighing on me. Oh, oh do tell. I think we've talked about it before, but right now is an anxiety ridden time and so my my mental coping mechanisms are just looking for outlets for anxiety to just like mm -hmm. place my anxiety i random songs random notes in songs like i'm obsessing about different things but this week ironically what has been on my mind heavily is what is Lindsay going to say to Bobby? We left Lindsay stewing in her car, observing Bobby kiss, flirt like a third grader with this girl in the corner. Oh, no. They they full on kiss kissed. Yeah, they kiss kissed. And, and Lindsay was stewing. And Bobby, if we know anything, Bobby is so cool around the women. He's so suave. But when he's trying to like lie, he's about as good as Rebecca in the last episode. He's a bumbling fool. So I can only yeah. imagine we're going to be treated to episodes or scenes of Bobby bumbling over himself. And it's going to be uncomfortable. It's been uncomfortable for a week for me now. Yeah. Can we get some resolution today? Uh, well, we are going to get a continuation at the very least. Uh, yeah. And uh, we, uh, as we, we were showing in the in the teaser, if you can't see it, we have a uh, the, our Easter egg. It's hard to uh, it's hard to read the because CBS we have logo, such... But this is an ABC property, yes. It, it is indeed. So there's uh, there's a lot going on there. So gonna be uh, gonna be a very interesting episode. And I think, frankly. We should uh, we should just get to it. We should jump yeah. into it. Uh, but folks, if you would like to cheer up Mike in his uh, state of being kind of stressed out, how would they how would they reach out and uh, cheer up Mike? Uh, it's very simple to do that, Keith. Uh, nobody really takes us up on it much anymore, but it is a, a possible <laughs> thing they can do. Um, you yeah, know, you can, uh, on our you can other write... show, on our other show, you got called out for complimenting like somebody's grandmother which i'm assuming means a backhanded compliment you just gave our contact info like a guilting mother nobody calls us much anymore but well, you true. know you could the phone you know, number the phone are still works. things are lots are happening we're out here making this podcast that's changing the world one episode at a time i'm and, just uh, saying the email's the same it's not bro i checked to see if it was broken mm -hmm. but you know I mean, what? it's it nice still that works. you sent soup but it was cold uh, out of practice podcast at gmail.com or on the social media and by social media i mean the old stuff we haven't tiktoked yet but i, th I guess we're supposed to do that out of <laughs> practice podcast with the little at symbol in front that's us and uh we hope you could, uh, <laughs> if you want to join the jury you can leave a rating a review uh, but we don't even show that anymore because it's it's over <laughs> Wow, Mike is in a dark place. In our other show, in our other show that we're having a lot of fun with uh, on the channel, you can check that out. Uh, look at my Star Trek toys. We had somebody, <laughs> which lo lo great, great community over there too. And they, somebody said to us, "You guys should really have more, more followers." And we're like, <laughs> oh, "Okay, yeah, I agreed." <laughs> yes, multiple people. It's like, why don't people watch this? Yeah, it's free, it's, but free also means no budget to uh, pay for Google AdSense. It's, so, uh, it's true. It's 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 hey, real... Charlie. Oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> Charlie's coming to visit. Oh boy, it's uh, all right. Let's get through the obligatory stuff so we can get to the episode. I, I need to know. I need to get. I need to find out what's happening. All right. Well, then you know what? Let's just jump right into the time machine. Yeah, let's do Shall it. Shall we? Let's go back. To April seventh, the year two thousand and three, 
Uh, Mike, what were you doing? This day in the basement. Well, buddy, I think that uh, if I'm not mistaken, we uh, are doing a little exercise this week that I'm going to join you with. So I'm going to let you go first. I'll follow you up because uh, remember, I already lived this, relived this year of my life. So I'm just kind of retreading. So let's. Oh, uh, I see. All right. I believe well, we're coming. We're going to talk about uh, headshots today. Yeah? Mike's in reruns. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, first off, I've been in syndication since 2002, baby. <laughs> Uh, so uh, first off, I went back to the old emails and I found an email from my roommate at that point, uh, Jenny, who uh, w- went to college with me. We moved in. Apparently, it was a very important laundry night. Mm. It was so important that she emailed me. Email. Because, you know, there's no texting at that point, or at least it was very rudimentary. And I don't even think I had a cell phone. And she's like, look, we're going to do laundry, even if it snows. Here we go, laundry night. So... Uh, folks, big night, big night. I used night. to love launcher night. Now, for our younger viewers or people who didn't live in a city, you have always had a washing machine, so the laundromat wasn't a thing. But you generally, it wasn't like today. If laundry day had been like today, you could have a podcast, you could have something, you know, to go on. Mm-hmm. But back mm-hmm. then, my la- these laundromats didn't have TVs. There was no podcast. So you had to set aside a day. If you weren't around the corner and couldn't bounce back and forth to your apartment, you'd bring a notebook with you, a novel, maybe your laptop uh, that you right. ripped some Napster and you could just hang out at the laundromat. It was a thing. And I recall, because people would also steal your shit. Oh, yeah. Well, and like, there's usually a germy, torn copy of Entertainment Weekly from 1996 you could read. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was... Uh, well, Every but- time I do laundry here in the laundry machine, I am, or the laundry machine, the the washing machine, that's what they call it. Yeah, they do it's, that. it's a new thing for me. Uh, no, I am you, appreciative. I am appreciative. Do you have one in, in your apartment? We do. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, that that was a really big. Our last apartment in Astoria had one, um, which was so. It, it felt like the world opened up and changed. It was, of course, like a giant washer dryer shoved into your bathroom. Uh, whereas oh, we have like I mean, actually a, like a room for it here, which is nice. Yeah, you have a room for it in your apartment. We do. My apartment is like almost a house. Yeah, that's pretty swanky. And you're out to, yeah, you definitely have upgraded significantly. Oh, yeah. We've leveled up for sure. But uh, but yeah, no, I mean, and our our laundry is, is just a few feet to my left right this very minute mm, because yeah, we're maybe. broadcasting from the basement. Anyway, all right, so what are we really talking about? We did laundry, that's exciting. Laundromats, New York City, Brooklyn. Uh, you probably used the same laundromat when you moved in uh, that same apartment just uh, mm-hmm. about a year later. So uh, this was... I think I mentioned having them taken, but this was the week that I got my headshots printed. My very first New York City headshots. Uh, hold on, I'm reaching, I'm reaching. And let me tell you, uh, speaking of time machine, these headshots were shot with a camera on film. Mm-hmm. On you actual, the negs? literal, black. I do have the contact sheet, the negatives. And I do have the contact sheet. I think I might have put one up there. Uh, so here are all of the contact sheets of 22 and a half year old uh, me in black and white looking absolutely ridiculous in these ancient headshots. And so I, I believe the final product uh, Mike has to show you here. My goodness, that is what I chose to, that is how I chose to represent myself to the theater industry uh for many years and uh yeah it was uh it was tough so here we are uh, and i decided to do the 18 year challenge or 19 year challenge and so there's uh there's one of the possibilities for my new headshots that uh you know now did you take that on a timer or did you have your wife film that i took it on a timer that that is a self-portrait here in the in the basement Nice. Uh, using your telephone? No, no, no. Using my uh, using my my Sony. I have a Sony A thirty three. Nice. So, uh, yeah. So I I took a whole mess of them, and I don't you know I don't know which ones I'm going to choose, but I I did one in black and white to match the original one. So the, if you're wondering just how how rough the eighteen years was, there it is, right there on your screen. Uh, yeah, but it was a it was a big deal. Those first time getting your professional headshots. Oh, I remember, my friend. I remember. I uh, I think I've shown this photo before, but uh, I this is also that challenge for my end. Uh, yes. 
that was my first headshot I chose for school, and uh, this was that's one I, I used about four years ago. So that's not particularly up to date, as you can tell. I still look like a young man there, but uh, <laughs> it's so weird to me now. You think about the whole process of getting a headshot, but like the people generally now have hundreds, and they're cycling them through every couple weeks. Every you know, so right, right. Don't really, I mean, I think at the at the probably upper echelons of our industry, you're getting professional headshots, but like Keith showed us before, you can you can do that stuff yourself. Right now, you just want to look, you just want to represent what you look like today, right? Right. Yeah. It just, it just needs to look like you, and I think that there's so much like this idea that you have to be, if if it's if if it's overproduced, if you look like more glamorous than you are in real life, that's not useful. Mm -hmm. Like, and and in some projects that can hurt you. If you're yeah. going in to play like you know. A monster on Law and Order, which I, I think I texted you and Jen. My initial headshot, like I was ready to go in for every creeper that was ever on SVU in all twenty something seasons in that picture, but that would have helped me. Uh, but uh, but yeah, you know it's it's so funny. Age has helped us. You know, like we had, we had a little chubbier cheeks back in uh, back in the the, the early two thousands than we do today. Now we're just you know, life has sucked it out of us. All right. Well, uh, yeah. So that was fun, and I have written here on the envelope my family's assessment of which headshots to choose, because that was that was always part of the tradition: is you go and you show the contacts <laughs> to all your friends and families. And apparently, my father liked four hundred three, number thirty one. So that okay. was a that was a that was a big one. So there it is. All right. Well, we've discussed where what we were doing. In April of 2003, I think it's time to uh, zoom out a little bit and see what was going on. It's time for the Out of Practice Podcasts This Day in the World. The greatest hits, the biggest movies, headlines from Vermont, essential sports updates, and for some inexplicable reason, the weather from 20 years ago. Now back to Keith and Mike. I, I should... I should point out that the uh, the voice of that segment won the fantasy football league, uh, quite quite demonstrably. Yeah, he kicked both of our asses. Wow, this is it's a Christmas wow. cover of Into Club. Uh, the Christmas cover. That's amazing. This is Ali Spagnola. Uh, the channel is at Ali Spagnola, and it's the video is entitled "What If Into Club Was a Christmas Song." So thanks, a shout out to them. Wow, that's amazing! Well, thank you for that. I I was so like gobsmacked by it, I couldn't speak. <laughs> well, I'll give you some other information. Let me tell you uh, what we were seeing in the movie theaters. We were seeing Phone Booth, which mm. uh, the Colin Farrell and Kiefer Sutherland spoiler alert vehicle, uh, most of which took place of uh, with Colin Farrell in a phone booth. It, it wasn't as good as you hoped it was going to be, but uh, I think I saw that in the theaters. Yeah. For some reason, I saw a lot more movies in the theaters there than I remembered that I did. I guess that was a thing I did. I don't know. And the cover, the Burlington Free Press talked about because we are right, you know, in the in the heat of the war, Baghdad surrounded. So this was the point in the war where we had taken over all of Iraq except for Baghdad, mm. uh, going in. So. Uh, Definitely a very big uh, day historically um, in terms of the uh, the big picture of the world. But luckily, uh, we don't care about the geopolitical issues of the world. We care about... It's time. It's time. It's time, it's time for sports. The NHL season finished the day before the episode aired, and both the Bruins and the Flyers were preparing for their first round matchups. Boston will play the New Jersey Devils, and the Flyers are set up for a matchup versus the Toronto Maple Leafs. Stay tuned to find out what happened 19 years ago. There it is, folks. Hockey playoffs. The NFL playoffs are happening right now. Uh, the NFC East was not represented well. Um, but it never they all really did. is, is it? Look, we won. Both of our teams have won the Super Bowl in the last twenty years. So it seems it, it just seems so ridiculous that that's a fact. I I would just like to point out for mainly just for Mike and I because our brains work differently. But uh, Eli's first Super Bowl 
right? Beating beating the undefeated Patriots and the you know the mm-hmm. helmet catch or whatever was only four years after this episode of the practice aired. That's insane to me. <laughs> it was fifteen years ago. I remember that cat. I'll never forget it. That was. Oh, the, I, the there's so few thing, times where Eagles fans or Giants fans are rooting as a unit, and that was one of them. I can't believe that was 15 years ago. It feels like that was like five years ago. Yeah. I remember everything about it. Well, there we there are. There are times right. when I, I forget that I'm old, and then I stand up. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, that's really uh, that's craziness. All right. Let's do this. I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value, and I'm not going to take this anymore. It's time. Okay, we are talking about The Practice Season 7, Episode 19. Tick, tick, tick. Uh, oh God, we're so close. is more to the end of Season 7, at least, yes. So we are we are only three episodes away from the final season of The Practice. And the final season of Out of Practice. I can't believe it. It's uh, we're, we're really getting up there. This episode was written by David E. Kelly. Okay. And directed by veteran director Denny Smith. Dennis Smith uh, directed this. It leaves us with only one important question that we always ask. Stalling. There it is. Stalling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is that supposed to mean? What's your problem? Is this yeah. what happens to women when you insert your penis? Ooh. What? Gonna yeah, what if he would have drank the curdled milk? Then what would have happened? That's a good question, Jimmy. Mm, Although I'm mm. off the dairy milk, so uh, you're off the dairy milk. Yeah, I'm really back to. I'm really go. I'm all almond, baby. Ew. Oat milk too. I like oat milk. Anyway, why do you hate cows? So I love cows. That's kind of the whole thing. Uh, mm. I don't actually it has nothing to do with cows. So. <laughs> So, folks, if you can't tell, that's the CBS Mike logo. Mike wants which, to remain continent. Uh, <laughs> but I also see a shark, right? So, uh, so I'm gonna guess here that somehow we pull like a a, a Stephen King in the uh, Dark Tower series and write in some sort of the ABC CBS conflict into the mm. episode somehow. In like a Ooh. schlocky, cheesy way, like like um, some bullshit, like uh, the board of CBS, the like the brass of CBS is being held hostage, or some like some shit, or uh, there's like an attack, like a terrorist attack on the networks. But why would it be CBS? Something that is just absurd that would be shark jumpy. Mike, I feel like you don't have high expectations for this episode. Well, you put that shark fin baby in. <laughs> um, so there's going to be some bullshit in the A case about that. Uh, I'm going to say a bomb scare at the CBS headquarters. Okay, that's okay. where I'm going to go. Okay. And then let's get to the, the nitty gritty. And and there's no like defense stuff happening. Like It has nothing to do in the court case. This is all like a, a Bobby McRambo type action sequence. I don't know why. Maybe, okay. Uh, who's somebody we haven't seen a lot lately of? Eugene. No, we've seen Eugene. Anybody Rebecca. except for Bobby? Yeah, we haven't right. seen Rebecca in a while. So Rebecca somehow, Rebecca and uh, Jamie have okay. to do, have some meeting at the CBS headquarters for like a reality. They don't do reality shows yet. Was, oh, no, they some definitely sh- do. Okay, so for some reality show and there's a bomb scare or a, no, a hostage taker and they're trapped in the CBS building and something happens. Okay, that's okay. it. Okay, all right. B... Bobby and Lindsay have a have a tete a tete, and mm-hmm. Bobby's a bumbling fool. He first tries to lie, then Ooh. Lindsay calls Lindsay calls him, and calls it on him. And somehow, at the end of all of this, they manage to make Lindsay look like the bad guy. And Keith and Mike are upset. Okay, well, those are my uh, guesses. This got this got real. Sorry. <laughs> wow, this is this. Uh, you know. Mike, you know, sometimes Mike is here is like funny Mike, and sometimes his heart is right there in front of us, and we can see it beating. Uh, 
I'm and, a little uh, sad. We're getting close to the end, and that means the show's over. And we've we've really this has been like a huge part of our life. So uh, you know, we're gonna have another in. show. <laughs> Just tell me it's gonna be okay, Keith. It's gonna could be someone, okay. Mike. Could someone write have... to out of practice podcast at gmail.com and tell me it's gonna be okay? It's gonna be okay. We're gonna You have... know who I need? Do you know who hmm. I need? Who do you need? I hate to say this because he just destroyed my Eagles, but I think I need Tom Brady to write in. We haven't heard from him <laughs> in so long. Oh, it's that's been true. Seasons. Tom, Tom, Tom. I know you're busy being a terrible person. Uh but uh, our, our good friend Mike needs uh, needs a little pick me up, so you know maybe maybe throw him a Lombardi trophy or two. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit me in the head with it. No, no, just like throw it over some sort of like a chasm over lava because you know you have a hundred of them, so you don't so really many. give a crap about so each next one. It. Come on, you, you know Gronk will fish it out of the lagoon. Yo, Gronk. We talk about Tom. Gronk is still just like chugging along too. He's like, oh, I'll catch every pass and have a he thousand doesn't... yards and touchdowns. He doesn't care. He doesn't even know he's, it's a sport. All right. Uh, folks, it is now time to hop over to your podcasting service of choice and listen. You know, I don't know. I, I said choice, but in my head, I'm like, that's wrong. But I was right. I don't know. We're, we're all feeling a little weird today. But we're going to watch this episode, Season 7, Episode 19, Less is More. We will see you back here on the YouTube for the Oopsies. And we are ba 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 back, baby. Ba 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 back. Okay, we have seen an explosive episode of the practice. Now it's time to hand out some fake awards. But before we do that, it is time for everybody's favorite segment. Mm, two, three. Mike has 30 seconds to remember what just happened on the show. Segment. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know. Uh, Lindsay threatens to kill Bobby because she saw the kiss, but then she was just joking. Really, she just wants to like discuss it and like almost come back together and then like talk to the girlfriend or the girl and then like come back and then go back away and then come back again and then decide at the end like, no, no, I'm just leaving you and taking the kid. Uh, did we really, what did we, what did we discover there? Who knows? Also, hey, Jimmy got kidnapped with Les Moonves. Nobody got blown up. It was all a big stunt by Andy McDowell uh, to prove point of something. And uh, that's the show. Oh, there it is. Wow. Okay. That was uh, very efficient. Let's do it even more efficient in a segment we call... We were supposed to hear that. In fact, I know why we didn't, but I'm I'm not going to deal with it. Actually, I am going to deal with it right now as we're discussing, because uh -huh. I think it's important for everyone to know that. I, I, in fact, it is set up correctly. I don't know why it... Hey, you know what? Keith, I don't you, think did it matters. you did a good job. It doesn't yeah. matter. I'm really enjoying the leaves blowing behind your head. You sh we should be hearing it, is the interesting part. But... No, eh, don't worry about it. Anyway, uh, the high Koopsie goes like this. <clears throat> Lindsay's going off. Les Moonves might get blown up. What is happening? Yeah, yeah, there it is. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know what's going on on the show, but I do know what's going on in our show. Uh, it's a fake award show. Like, uh, it begins like this. Ladies and gentlemen. The out of practice podcast. No, we can't hear that either. I don't hear that either. The out of practice podcast. Sexual association. I think it's recording. Though. Kelly My guess is that it's proudly present. So that's okay. Good. Oopsie. Well, if not, uh, enjoy Oopsie. the uncomfortable silence while we sit here and, and Mike and I watch the graphics good. that most of you can't even see. Good. Lawyering, Lawyering good. good. Guesting good. Being Tom Brady. Being Tom, being Tom, Tom Brady. This is where we rate the episode. This is where we talk about the spare cards and stuff. Here are your hosts. And now, Keith and Mike. Let's do the oopsies. <laughs> what the hell are the oopsies? How many you, times have we heard that bumper and you don't know any of the words? Let's, I bet you that got recorded and we were just talking over it very loudly. So, uh, uh, but let's begin with everybody's favorite. Yeah. Uh, 
I really enjoyed that at the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, what did Jimmy really do? He got what did anybody do any lawyering today? I guess Jimmy is the only person who did any active lawyering. Well, I, not only did he do active lawyering, but he saved but some lives. Well, before, nobody was really at risk. Oh, well, she had a well, gun. That gun was real. No, the gun was real. She shot the TV. But here's the thing. He was hired to facilitate getting that broadcast on TV and $4 million in a Swiss bank account. He was two for two. It was broadcast on TV. She got to say her manifesto and she got her money. Jimmy did everything he was supposed to do. You think he takes a percentage of that? Four mil or probably not, right? It's a crime. Uh, I mean, yeah, but you know, Jimmy's Jimmy's not above a crime. How do you think he got here on the show? All right. Well, it seems pretty. Hey, look, he berluted the shit out of it. And here we are. Yeah. Well, I mean, and obviously he didn't piss his pants. He did it calmly. He did not. Congratulations, Jimmy Berluti, on your M V L. It's time for Hope You Stretched, because we're over 40. Already famous because you've been on TV, getting a paycheck. Check. The first entry on your IMDb, way to go. But you're the best guest actor. You are the best guest actor. You are the best guest actor. Episode. Yeah. Um. Uh, so Andy McDowell here. I, I, listen, I I love Andy McDowell. I just I, if it didn't. I, my criticism. My, it feels to me like she wasn't sinister enough. Like she wasn't bad guy e enough. But then again, it the character sort of isn't really. It's she's more like a like a really sophisticated genius television producer who had a really well Told thought out and written in a very unsophisticated fashion. Yes. But like, she seems like she thought through her plan. She achieved her goals. I mean, it was really, and she's going to do her three years and it looks like that's that. I, I, I don't know. I, she was put in a really difficult position, I guess in the hands of someone less talented, it could have been a just complete train wreck. Maybe. I mean, I want, I don't know. I, Did we felt, avoid that train wreck? That's the thing. Like, I just felt like she didn't. I feel a little bad for Andy McDowell. I just feel like she was put in a situation where, like, you know, usually you get this meaty role where you can really get your Emmy, get your daytime Emmy or whatever, but primetime Emmy. But I don't know. But, but there's what other guest stars do we have? Uh, well, uh, yeah, it was difficult. You had Les Moonves, you had Terry Polo. But uh, no, we my... are not we are not giving Les Moonves a goddamn oopsie for this. No, we are not. But I'll tell you, there's only one answer, Mike. It's very clear and it's very oh, obvious. Yes. He pissed Gresh himself was for this. Granted radio airtime, but no prime time broadcast has ever. I just pissed my pants. <laughs> Ab Absa fucking lootly. Absa fucking lootly. And I'll tell you, I have done the research. It is the better podcast. This is Jerry Penacoli, who uh, is an active reporter. He uh, actually, he was, did 20 years of entertainment reporting. I think he was on uh, Entertainment Tonight or yes. something like that. He is currently on the daytime on the News Channel 8 uh, in uh, Florida. And uh, he was born in Philadelphia, now is uh, in Jacksonville, Florida, Jerry Penacoli. He's been doing this for a very long time. He and his husband have a beautiful baby. That's all. Those are all the things that I know about Jerry Penacoli. But the more, most important entry in his Wikipedia page is he earned an oopsie with one line. I can just we, can we add myself. to? Can someone? I can't be, I can't do it. I will not do it. Can someone update his Wikipedia page, please? Dear listeners, somebody go and update the Wikipedia page of Jerry Penicoli and that he is a 2022 Oopsie Award winner for his pissing pants performance in the practice. Thank you uh, so much. Oh, you know, it's so funny. I, I, I just heard from him. He found out that he won uh, an Oopsie Award and here's his comment. Oh, he, there it is. He did it. Hey, you know what? 
Don't you don't have to be embarrassed, Jerry. That that uh, is a common, very common side effect of winning your first oopsie. It really is. Congratulations. Uh, there is, and he was he was born in Philly. You might have seen him on your Philly TV back in the day. All right, it is time to move forward and hand out a, a more difficult one. You killed your podiatrist or blew the case But you let a single tear run down your face You're the best actor on the show You know, I, I think it's Kelly Williams this week. Um, we will probably discuss our feelings on like the the back and forth, but I, I think what we discussed earlier, and will probably be my summation in mere moments, is that it's very complicated, and it's hard to know how you'd react in the situation. But despite the top of the episode, which we'll discuss, I think the majority, ninety percent, was felt very rooted and very grounded in 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 confusion, in pain, in suffering, in all kinds of things. And I think Kelly showed those myriad emotions well, and I think gave us the a true sense of someone who's ultimately conflicted and, and going through a, a very specific type of pain. And I think that uh, that is not easy to show, very easy to kind of summarize through acting, but she really gives us many of the colors. So I'm going to say Kelly Williams. Yeah, well, uh, I have uh, a lot of pins. I think I should also point out that, it, oh, what? Guys, we have a live filing in subpoena. Word, we just got a, a cable, we just got a tele, teletext from uh, from upstairs, and uh, the quote is, Jerry Penicoli is a Philly staple. K, uh, KYW, KYW News. News Radio 1060. There it is. Well, look, we've... I, I bet you Jerry Penicoli did not know he was going to get so much airtime uh, he, here on... Is this, uh, what What do you think Jillian is to the podcast? What is her, uh, is this comptroller Jillian <laughs> Comp Lewis? Uh, is this her <laughs> comptroller Jillian her making two appearances on the podcast today? I know. I, and just from upstairs because our house is not as soundproofed as we'd like it to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, poor thing. She puts up with a lot. Well, All right. She's been upgraded to Comptroller. Comptroller. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for your message, Comptroller Jillian. And we will continue forward. Uh, yeah, it's Kelly Williams. I, I Honestly, I think Dylan did a tremendous yes. job with this too. Um, but I think Kelly Williams... Uh, oh, okay. Uh, that uh, Yeah, Kelly Williams does incredibly good job in this um you know it sometimes she's given difficult writing to pull off um but she does it with she she classed up this whole situation with her terrific work so congratulations kelly williams now it is time uh, mike i i think i'm i'm just gonna let you introduce this one as you have had some personal interaction uh, and it's not the type where he's cheering you up. Well, folks, we're talking about the Tom Brady board for being Tom Brady. And let me tell you, unfortunately for me, this this episode had some trigger warnings because uh, as you, if you're not a sports ball follower, you might not know that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where Tom Brady is the uh, chief cook and bottle washer, he mm -hmm. uh, played the Philadelphia Eagles in a we shouldn't have been in the playoffs playoff appearance last night, yesterday afternoon. And uh, every time Tampa Bay scores a touchdown, they fire off cannons. And so, unfortunately, Andy McDowell firing off that cannon today reminded me that we got our asses blown out last night. And you, so you did. Uh, I will pay respect to the goat quarterback and also to the episode with this week's winner for the Tom Brady Warfare being Tom Brady, which is simply Tom Brady riding a cannon. Tom Brady riding a cannon. Okay, very good, very good. I'll, uh, let me let me let me write that down like a uh, professional podcaster because I'm you know I'm now realizing I haven't done any of these yet. I cannot wait because Keith, I have to remind you the episode. We I think the season has 
Three more episodes? Uh, yeah, no, I'm not exactly liking my uh, my my Photoshop work ahead of me. Yeah, especially with the playoffs, where how deep we are, it's great. All right, well, congratulations, Tom Brady, writing a cannon for winning the Tom Brady Award for being Tom Brady. It is now time for uh, I'm on the wrong thing, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. You know, this dis- this requires a discussion. Mm. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. Uh, I, I, you know, I, 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 there is a part of me that can give the benefit of the doubt to both these storylines. I'm going to start with the, the relationship storyline because it started, I really thought it was going to be real schlock because uh, Kelly started off with like the, her murderous thing. But, you know, I've been pissed before. <laughs> I've... I've had a temper just really, so I can, yes, it felt a little heavy handed because of all the shit we've gone through with Lindsay, but that's a small, that's a small, but a small tip of the iceberg of this story. And I think that, you know, I kind of evolved along this runtime to kind of really come to appreciate this. This is, like you said, a really big swing about a relationship story. One is not really, especially at this point in time on television, not really explored much. A committed married couple with a child breaking up uh, is not something you generally get, you know, episodic television about early aughts. So, and and the way the actors are, are approaching it is really heartbreaking, uh, maddening on both sides. And, and what I think is kind of unique too is you think that, they're, all signs are leading to, oh, maybe they're going to find sort of a res- resolution here. But then it comes down to Bobby made a decision and Lindsay made a decision, and there are still oh. conflicting decisions. Now, I feel like they've set themselves up to to once again maybe trickle down the, the road of unbelievability or making one side the bad guy. But as it stands now and as it's explored in this particular episode, I, I really found it uh, an interesting exploration, and as, as you heard me in real time, if you listen to the episode, I don't, I don't know what I would do in this scenario, and and how I would respond on either side. And so it was interesting to see. I thought two very grounded human uh, portrayals of a possible a possible outcome. So I'm, I'm I I dug it. It was uncomfortable, but I I don't feel uncomfortable about. I mean, I do feel uncomfortable, but I think that's the point. But I don't feel. Uh, underserved by it. The other episode, or the other, it feels like a completely different episode of it television. It definitely does, yeah. I, I don't get it. I don't get the why. I get what they're trying to say because they just said it over and over and over again. I mean, just listen to the monologue. Basically, the closing time was her big monologue at the end. There was zero conflict because they tell us early on that there's no bomb in the thing. There's no, and they serve not, but not, she gets exactly what she expected going in. There was no twist. There was no. It was played completely straight, as crazy as it was. It was a commentary on television, not really reality TV as much as just like what the networks serve us, highlighting all of the networks using real network people, but. In, and I would give it even more credit if I believed that it was self-referential, if, that it was observing, that it was doing the very thing it was commenting on. But but it does not feel as if it was that. Yeah, you might, you as a viewer or you as a listener might disagree. But my viewpoint is that it is, it it is it fails ultimately, not just because it's ridiculous, which I think you'll comment on, but because it. It had a chance, and they are smart enough. He's shown that he has the the, the capability, David, in the writing staff, to to let us see the wink, let us know that they're. It seems not to re- recognize that it is the victim, and it is guilty of all of the things it is it is commenting on. Right, which I don't know. That's my viewpoint, and it's just ridiculous. It's Bobby McRambo style stupid, it, and it doesn't. It's stupid. Yeah, we get it. Television's dumb. Like we, what? Why is it, it's it's played almost as strong as the like they're commenting on the death penalty, 
right? And it's mm-hmm. just not. Yeah, it's that yes, the television and the entertainment industry is gross and and exploitative. But but the, I don't know. It feels beneath the show. It feels just stupid. And it uses Annie McDowell in such a sp- stupid part. She's just better than that. So uh, I really did not like that. Uh, maybe you'll convince me otherwise. It brings down the score quite a bit. I think it's it barely breaches six point. I'm gonna say five point seven five spare tires, maybe lower five point five point four five spare tires. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, I, you know, I'll work like you did. Um, the Bobby Lindsay thing, I, I, you know, I think I feel sort of like you do, where I'm I'm coming around a little bit on it, um, because. Again, it's a valid story to tell. It's a story that's going to happen a lot, happens a lot in real life. And I think it's, um, it's almost a little ahead of its time playing, uh, playing out that depressing storyline, but that is very human. Um, and of course being performed well, I, I, my problem with it is not Lindsay and Bobby breaking up because to be perfectly honest, I wasn't super invested in their relationship to begin with. Um, it's a show about the practice of law. I don't give a shit who's fucking who or who's married to who or whatever. I, it's just it's just not that interesting to me for for the for this purposes. Um, but I wish that they had come up with a more coherent reason why, right? Because, we're being told that this this breakup is happening because of like being emotionally detached or something 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 right there are plenty of good reasons why they might break up the result of trauma that they have both gone through the lack of um support that they've taken to deal with that trauma um you know maybe there are consequences of it moving forward maybe it's maybe it's about intimacy maybe it's about behavior maybe it's an an addiction crops up or like all sorts of things that would be i think more tied to the re- to the story that they've been telling um where in reality bobby's just sort of shitty and Lindsay's just kind of there <laughs> you know what i mean like i don't yeah, uh, I mean, everything I said is a, is is accepting that they retconned the story, right? Because the truth is, is that there's plenty of, I mean, Bobby's explaining why this particular uh, straying happened, but that's take not taking into any of the account that they've shown Bobby to be having a wandering eye to be to right. be nice. And you know what I mean? and and we've spent a lot of time saying, well, Lindsay abandoned him. Lindsay, Lindsay is emotionally distant or whatever. Well, they haven't really told that story. Right, they they're referencing it. She's been accused of it a ton, but we haven't really seen it. Right. So I, I don't I don't believe it. <laughs> you know, it's it's just not. So the the lead into it has hurt this storyline. Um, so I mean, you know, it ending with Bobby's wandering eye. Yeah, that makes sense. That's set up. Like, of course, of course, that's how how it ended. It's just Lindsay's half of it feels unearned and unexplained. Um, all right. So the less moons Moonves canon of it all. Uh, I can't help make this better, um, but I think I can imagine why it's there. David E. Kelly, at this point in his career and his relationship with television television is pissed five years ago this show and ali mcbeal was crushing the world he won the emmy award for best comedy and best drama people were paying attention it was like the the prestige procedural or the prestige scripted drama was dominating television and was feeling like we were about to go in you know with the west wing and sopranos we were going to go into the golden age of television well guess what happened between then and when this episode aired reality television came in like a gorilla and stomped on everything else 
And so at this point, not only was the practice getting stomped by reality television show, he had three shows canceled in the year previous to this episode. And the practice at this point was hanging on by a thread of being canceled as well. So uh, in the, the two shows that I mentioned earlier, uh, he, he developed two new dramas. The, the One of them got nine episodes. The other one got seven before being canceled. Ally McBeal had just been canceled. And one of the reasons that reality TV was kicking his ass was money was the budget reality tv was crazy still is crazy cheap to produce and david e kelly style scripted dramas are crazy expensive and one of the reasons that he's about to be you know or that that the practice is in such danger right now is it's super expensive um the cast is very expensive the sets are expensive the, the, all of it um so I think this is David E. Kelly pissed off about the state of what's happening with his stuff, the stuff that's happening in the larger picture of the television world. He's pissed off at the audience. The last thing he does is aim a cannon at the audience and shoot the audience, then have Eugene tell us we just shot the audience. He's saying, fuck you for watching Fear Factor with all this work that I'm doing. Um, and I think that that is, that's where he's at. And I think there's a part of this episode where that part of it was just bad. You know, it was lit bad. It wasn't performed well. It looked bad. And I think there might've been a part, I don't know if this was conscious or subconscious, where David E. Kelly's like, you want garbage? Here's some fucking garbage. Watch my damn show. And I think that is where David E. Kelly was at when this was uh, written and produced. So I don't have an answer, but that's a lot of speculation. Sure. And the different ratings. If that's it, then that's like that's that's like the John Ashcroft. OK, I'm, I'm on board for that. But then do it well. Right. But I, I, I think he was too mad. You know, and I think this happens sometimes. David E. Kelly gets too angry to do it well. And he's been he's been pissed off this whole season. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and and he was he was pissed off and did it well when dealing with the Catholic church Catholic church molestation issues. Like he did that he was pissed and he did that well. All right, well then it sounds like you Okay, well then what's your score? Reflect it. What's your rating? What's your, on sweet weeks? <sighs> I understand the rage. I understand writing a revenge piece. I wrote a revenge musical, but this isn't good. It's not good. I'm sorry. It's, I'm sorry. It's just not good. And I think if you're looking back on it today, you know, it's not good. So you uh, just said, explained exactly why his, his defendant is, has every reason to have done what they did. And then says, "But I think they're guilty." <laughs> yeah, no, one hundred percent guilty. You're you're guilty. This is this is bad. Uh, this is like this is like a rage tweet that became a network television show. Amazing. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna give it a five point eight. Okay, we close. I all thought we were gonna have like a have to come and come meet in the middle, but no, you're we're on the same board. It's not good. It's not good. So, uh, wow. So, all right. So I think it's time for us to reveal the well, Easter egg. Shouldn't be, I mean, it, it's, it's, just, it's not hard to explain. At it's CBS jumping the shark. Everything's jumped. The shark being jumped the whole thing. It's, it's, that's a pretty genius one, Keith. Yeah. Well, it makes sense in context. Unlike the out of practice podcast. Well, folks, if you would like to write in, uh, you know, Tom Brady needs to cheer up Mike. We'd all like to hear from you. You can find us at Out of Practice Podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Out of Practice Podcast. While you're there, you know, <laughs> leave a rating and review. 
on Apple Podcasts or any other service, let us know if it's not Apple Podcasts because we're not checking that stuff. We also would like to thank our founding sponsors, Jorge Navoa, Cloud Lover 69, Leanne Wrights, Jennifer Matanova, and Kari Kuhn. Folks, you might not have to review us, but you can do so with your wallets. As always, the show is way more expensive than it needs to be, as David E. Kelly explored in this week's episode. You can find links in our show notes to donate to the show a one-time contribution or monthly sustaining membership. It's like PBS, but, you know, not at all. But we're bad. Yeah, <laughs> but we're bad. Hey, you can also help by telling a friend to check us out uh, or checking out our other show on the channel, Look at My Star Trek Toys, where we have an exploration of toys, custom toy makers, and Keith's never-ending nerddom. Folks, I'm not telling you to do this, but if you want to go to another successful podcast, take their hosts mm-hmm. and tie them up, hold them hostage, and potentially blow them up with a cannon, you can do so, but make sure to load that cannon simply with laser sounds. Laser sounds. <laughs>